Hey, yo guys, it's Sarah. You already know that today I'm bringing you my Pokemon Premier League Season 2 Draft Analysis slash Recap. I am so excited to be able to tell you that PPL is back and better than ever. We're going to be better than ever, hopefully. Um, if you guys uh, don't know or if you're new to the channel, I am a part of the PPL, the Pokemon Premier League, a Draft Battle League um, with some really awesome people in it. And I'm here to tell you about who is on the Pittsburgh Pyroar for Season 2 of the PPL. Um, so I don't really want to waste too much time. Uh, let's just get right into it. I picked 8th in the draft, um, which is an awful place to pick. It's like towards the end, so you don't really get uh, one really good Mon. You don't, I mean, there's still plenty of picks in between you and the second one. We did it in a snake style. Um, so, I mean, uh, 1 through 12, first person picks first, then it goes to 12th, and then that 12th person picks, uh, two Pokemon and then it goes from uh, like 12 and then 11, 10, 9 and it goes backwards and it just keeps going like in that pattern um, for the whole draft so I'm kind of in the middle and kind of late um, and also I kind of made my draft plan around not trying not to get sniped um, which I was actually really successful at so uh, yeah we are given a uh, budget of 100 million dollars uh, money European monies whatever and um, each Pokemon has a value that uh, was determined in the off season between seasons one and two by ourselves, um, by like the PPL as as a as a whole. Uh, we decided on uh, pricings for Pokemon, and uh, yeah, we have to make a team of eight to eleven Pokemon within that one hundred million dollar budget. And uh, yeah, so um, the draft plan and the draft itself, I think, are two kind of different things. Um, I spent a lot of time working on the draft plan. Uh, draft day itself basically went kind of according to my draft plan, so uh, there's really going to be too much. Um, for this season, instead of going after mons that I wanted, I went after things that I wanted. I was looking at, uh, at like stats and types and moves that I wanted, and I just kind of found mons to fit that role. As well as, uh, as, it's, as I started to round up my team, I wanted to make sure that they synergized really well. Uh, and I think they really do. Um, I'll give a, a, a final overview and thoughts to my team after I, I reveal um, all of my uh, picks. So I think that covers all the basic info. Any questions you have, just leave them in the comments. Also, uh, of course, make sure to go check out the PPL channel. There's going to be a lot more content on the PPL channel. Um, I'll also leave a, a link to the PPL Twitter. And uh, you guys, once you get to the PPL channel, make sure you check out everybody that is a part of the PPL. Um, so. With all that out of the way, let's go into the draft. So, my first uh, my first pick. Alright, so what I was looking for first. Again, keep in mind, I was looking for things. And then I decided the order and everything after that. Um, so, what I really wanted was a Steel type. And originally, I wanted... I, I kind of wanted a defensive Steel type, but I, I didn't really want something that was strictly defensive. I wanted to have it that all of my... Uh, mons could have offensive and defensive capabilities. I want my mons to be able to fill either role effectively. And, um, yeah, so a lot of steel types that I was looking at originally, uh, some of the cheaper ones, I was thinking things like Bronzog or things like Cabalion. Uh, Registeel was a possibility at one point, but I don't know. None of them just really had the it factor to me. And, uh, I decided that for my steel type, I wanted to go big or go home. So I got what, uh, is in my opinion, the best steel type that you could get, and I got, oh, 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 I got Scizor, yeah, I almost forgot to type it, um, I'm not doing uh, GFX for this uh, little uh, recap thing, also for my team analysis recaps for each week, uh, they will also be done on Showdown as well, so get used to this, because this is just so much better, and I think it provides you all the information that you need um, for things, but I got Scizor with my first pick, um, also, I'm gonna just let you know, Scizor was 15 million, so... Um, 50 million is basically the cap for normal Pokemon. That's that's like top tier Pokemon. Um, Megas go a little bit more expensive, but uh, spoiler alert, I didn't get a Mega. So uh, Sizzler, 15 million. Uh, why did I get Sizzler? So one thing uh, that turned out to be really popular in uh, in the PPL was Fairy types. Um, there were three fairies drafted in the first round, and basically every fairy that exists was drafted. Every good fairy that exists was drafted. Um, yeah, every yeah, basically. Um, unless you think Slurpuff is good, because I don't think it's good. 
and uh, that wasn't drafted. And of course, things like Dedenne and Carving weren't drafted, but like everything else basically was. Um, and Scizor is basically going to take care of a lot of fairies. I can use it offensive or defensive, um, base 130 attack, base 100 defense. It also gets reliable recovery. I really like my mods that get reliable recovery. Um, so it gets Roost, it also gets setup options in Agility and Sword Dance, as well as it can Baton Pass. Um, it get, also gets U-Turn for Momentum. And uh, there's other there's other moves I could use. I mean, there's Tailwind options, things like that, Pursuit, I guess. Um, there's other things that I can do, but uh, the main reason I got it was to be that offensive steel type um, that can deal with fairies. Uh, it gives me stab priority and bullet punch. And there's just so many things that Scizor can do for me that I just, I felt like I had to get a good steel type. And yeah, if I wouldn't have gotten Scizor with my first pick, then uh, Shoddy would have definitely taken it. And I would not have a Scizor on my team. So, and then I would have been, uh, I would have been forced to take a, a less than satisfactory steel type. And I didn't want to do that. So Scizor is uh, number one pick, and I'm very happy with this pick. I think it's going to put in a ton of work. Um, <laughs> next pick. Uh, the next pick uh, that I got is I wanted to make sure that I got a fairy of my own. Um, it didn't necessarily need to be pure fairy and it... Uh, I was really just looking at the fairy typing because I just want something to stop Outrage spam and Draco spam um, because those two moves are very powerful and they can run through a team if you don't have things to stop it. Um, so I didn't get the best fairy. But I did get, um, in my opinion, the best valued fairy that fits my playstyle, um, and that is whoop, here we go, and that is Gardevoir, um, regular Gardevoir for my second round pick, um, which I'm sure everybody you know thinks that's way too early to pick it. Um, Gardevoir was nine million, uh, which I think is a really good value for this mod. Uh, it's just, I didn't really have any backups to Gardevoir uh, by the time. Before I even picked Gardevoir, um, Clefable, Sylveon, and Togekiss were drafted. Um, and the only, like, fairies that are cheaper than Gardevoir um, are things like um, Whimsicott, Aromatisse, and uh, there's one other I can't think of. Wow, there's definitely another one, and I can't think of it. And, like, Slurpuff and, like, things like that. And that just wasn't good enough for me. Oh, Togetic was the other one I was thinking of. And none of those just really was anything I wanted. Um, so I chose Gardevoir as my fairy type. However, Gardevoir fits uh, a lot of roles uh, more than just fairy type. It gets a lot of support moves um, that I can use. It also gives me a heal beller, and it gives me the ability to wish pass. Um, and it just gives other things, Taunt, Thunder Wave. Uh, there's a lot of different things I can try and go for, uh, dual screens, it gives me a whole lot of options. Um, this is another mod that can be run offensive or defensive if need be, because it has base 125 special attack, which is really, really good, and 115 special defense. It also gets enough move coverage uh, for it to, to work very well offensively, and um, it can work pretty well defensively, uh, which is kind of its main way of uh, recovering. It also gets pain split. It's, semi-reliable, um, so, <coughs> yeah, I just think Gardevoir also works really well with Scizor, um, and it is part of my Fairy Dragon Steel Core, and we'll get to the Dragon part very, very soon, but I'm really, really happy with this Gardevoir pick, um, I don't really care if people think that I picked it too early, or if anything, anything like that, it's important to me, and in draft formats, if a Pokemon is that important to your team, you take it when you can, and you take it before someone else does, um, and I can't really say that I was wrong with my mentality because, like I said, I didn't really get sniped. There's one pick that was kind of a semi-snipe, and we'll get to that um, when the time comes. But I'm really happy with this Gardevoir pick. I think it's going to put in a lot of work. And, uh, yeah, maybe it's not going to get quite the playtime that you would expect from a second-round pick. But um, I think I'll be able to use it really effectively. So, yeah. Now, speaking of my very Dragon Steel Core, I thought dragons were going to be a lot more popular than they ended up being. Um, nearly every dragon was drafted, but a lot of them just weren't taken very early. So, I don't know, maybe I picked this pick a little too early, but again, it didn't really come back to bite me, so it's fine. Um, but I decided to go big on my dragon as well. Um, I thought about options like Kiram, 
I thought about, well, Hydreigon was also an original idea, but that was drafted first round. Um, but things like Kiram, uh, Haxorus, and Gudra were all available. Gudra didn't even end up getting drafted. But there was one dragon that I stumbled upon that I just fell in love with as soon as I saw its stats, move pool, and specifically ability, and that mon is Dragonite. Dragonite is so good. So good. Holy crap. Um, Dragonite is bulky. It's a bulky dragon, um, which is really good. Uh, it can take hits. Multi-scale uh, ensures that it takes hits. Base 134 attack, 100 special attack. You can run either. Um, like I said, multi-scale is fantastic. Um, this is another one that gets its own self-recovery with Roost, um, which is really good. And, uh, yeah, I, I really, I really like Dragonite. I think I can pull a lot of surprises with it. Um, there's a lot of moves it gets that, uh, you wouldn't really expect it to get. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty excited to use, to use this bond. This is a terrifying bond that people are going to have to prepare for every single week. Because if they don't, this thing can run through teams. Um, it has move coverage to hit anything that can switch in on it, basically. Um... And then after it's set up, there's not much that can stop this thing. Um, it also gives me an extreme speed user, which is always handy to have. And uh, yeah, it, there's just so many things that I can do with this thing. I really, really can't wait to uh, to put Dragonite to good use. This is my third pick, and Dragonite was 15 million. Again, uh, I think it was one of the more expensive, if not the most expensive dragon, um, not counting Megas. So between Dragonite, Scizor, and Garvor, I had spent 39 million, which is a decent chunk of change, but uh, not uh, super, not not like a lot, a lot, like because I didn't get a Mega and Garvor was only a nine. Um, and I also started to go a little bit cheaper from here on out. Um, I kind of went with what I'm going to call the Shroom Raver mentality, which is you draft your your big powerhouse stuff that you need up top, get your good lower tier picks in the middle, and then finish up the, the draft with some more powerhouses, uh, kind of like a sandwich. And um, so I started to go lower tiers. Uh, another thing that I was looking at that I really wanted on my team was a bulky psychic type. Um, there are a lot of options thrown around in my head and a lot of things that I wanted. Uh, Mew was one that definitely came to uh, the forefront of my mind. Uh, I really wanted Mew. However, um, when I really sat down and analyzed it, I realized that I was really only going to use Mew as a defensive psychic type and a secondary stealth rocker, and I could get both of those things for way cheaper. Um, Cresselia was another thing that popped into my head, but when I actually got around to looking at Cresselia's base stats, um, its, offense, uh, its offensive stats are not really anything special. Um, it requires setup to do any sort of damage. Um, <coughs> I, I don't know. I just feel like Cresselia is just begging to be set up on. So, I don't know. I decided not to go with that, and I went with a much uh, cheaper and, I, in my opinion, better option. And uh, that is Musharna. Musharna is a fantastic Pokemon, and I love Musharna so much. Um, yeah, uh, the difference, it's like, it's not its not quite as bulky as something like Cresselia, but it's bulky enough, base 116 HP, um, good defense and special defense, as well as that 107 special attack. So even without investment, Psychic and Psy Shocks on anything that doesn't resist it is going to hurt. Um, and of course it does give me uh, some form of offensive option. Um, Synchronize is a good ability for a defensive bond. It also gives me another uh, baton pass. I have, a, I have actually a decent amount of baton pass on this team, which is pretty funny. Um, but I don't remember the rule, I guess. I think you can only have like one mod with baton pass on a team at a time or something like that. Um, whatever. This also gives me another heal bell user, which uh, I actually have plenty of because uh, Dragonite gets heal bell as well. And I believe I got one more mod. No, two more mods in this draft that uh, have heal bell. Um, slash aromatherapy. We'll get to that. Um, Musharna gets its own self-recovery, uh, which is really good, as well as just, it just has a good, a good move pool, uh, has Thunder Wave, 
I believe, does, does this thing, yeah, this thing gets Trick Room, so that's a thing. I've never executed a Trick Room successfully, but uh, you never know. There's, there's always a time and place for everything. <laughs> uh, so we'll see. But I just wanted a bulky Psychic type. Um, they shut down a lot of uh, a lot of big threats in this league, and I just think Mishrata is going to do really well. Mishrata was only 8 million, so it was a really, really good deal. And I picked it in the fourth round because, like I said, I wanted to make sure that I picked the good lower tier stuff that I wanted before anybody else did. Because I'm sure Musharna Sharna would have been drafted by somebody. Um, I can't imagine this thing not being drafted by anybody. So, yeah, that is my fourth pick. That is Musharna. Um, next thing that I really wanted on my team was a reliable stealth rocker and a reliable spinner. Um, originally I was looking at Sandslash just because of its cheaper price, um, but when I rearranged my draft plan and realized that I had a little bit of extra money to spend, I decided that I was going to take Donphan. Donphan is my round 5 draft pick and I am a huge fan. A huge Don fan. Ha, <laughs> get it? Uh, jokes. Anyway, um, Donphan is one of, if not the most reliable stealth rocker because it gets sturdy. So I could lead off a match and there's literally nothing that can stop this thing from setting up Stealth Rocks, anything without Mold Breaker, and I'm pretty sure the only Pokemon that have Mold Breaker uh, are Haxorus and Excadrill, and I'm pretty sure neither one of them can Oko a Donphan anyway. So Stealth Rocks, uh, I can always get them up uh, if I want to. Uh, Donphan is also a very reliable Rapid Spinner, uh, one of my favorite Rapid Spinners, and uh, yeah, it's a really, really good Mon. Uh, 120 attack and 120 defense means that it can do both roles effectively. Um, stab Earthquake with base 120 attack is nothing, uh, nothing to, to to laugh at. It can it can definitely damage things. And uh, yeah, Donphan. Um, I think a lot of people know this by now if you follow draft leagues. But uh, Donphan has a surprising amount of move coverage. Um, things like Gunk Shot, things like Play Rough. Uh, it also gets Knock Off, Knock Off to hit any sort of spin blockers. Um, which can be really helpful. Uh, seed Bomb, things like that. It gets all the move coverage it's in the, it needs, um, and it, which is plenty. <laughs> Hyper Voice, that's actually really funny. Not going to use that, but I, I don't know. I just scrolled past and thought it was funny. Head Smash. <laughs> you could totally go Head Smash. Why not? Um, but yeah, so Don Fan is a really, really good Pokemon. Um, it gives me a reliable Stealth Rocker, reliable Rapid Spinner. Um, also, Scizor was kind of drafted. I, I think I forgot to mention it as kind of like my backup uh, hazard removal um, because it's a pretty reliable defogger. But yeah, so that's that's Don Fan. Also gives me more priority in the form of Ice Shard, uh, which is good to take out fast dragons. Despite the fact that I have like Dragonite, uh, but I mean like Noivern was drafted and uh, uh, other things. I don't know. Mega Altaria Ice Shard wouldn't do really that much though. I'm sure there's something else that I'm not really thinking about that uh, that I could do. You know, a good a good amount of uh, chip damage to uh, to with an ice shard from a Don fam. So uh, that's also a, another kind of big theme on my team is there's a lot of priority. Um, but yeah, uh, so the next pick uh, that I got is uh, I didn't want Don fam to be my only stealth rocker. I wanted another stealth rocker, um, but I didn't want my secondary stealth rocker to fulfill a similar role that Don fam would. Because if I'm not going to bring Donphan uh, with Stealth Rocks, why would I bring something like it with Stealth Rock? Like, it doesn't make sense. So I wanted a completely different typing, completely different thing. Like, I didn't want it to be similar to Donphan at all. Um, so with my next pick, I chose Kecleon. Kecleon, round 6, I think was a pretty good pickup. I don't know if it was on anybody else's radar, but Kecleon was only 5 million. Also, I don't know if I mentioned it, but Donphan was 10 million. Um, which is, you know, decent, but Kecleon is only 5 million, and Kecleon, I think, has the ability to do a lot of good things. Um, it's got 120 special defense and 90 attack, um, and with Protean that makes everything stab, which is really good. Um, Kecleon, uh, fulfills two main things that I wanted, um, A, it's, uh, that secondary stealth rocker, and it's effective at stealth rock. Um, it's also a normal type, uh, at least when it switches in, which is good because normal types only have one weakness, and I like Pokemon that don't have a lot of weaknesses. Uh, not that I always get a chance to use them, but uh, they're very effective, and it can it can work um, 
can be useful for, for pivots and things like that. Um, Kecleon being a normal type does have a wide variety of moves to choose from. Uh, you know, he gets Drain Punch, uh, he also gets Sucker Punch, uh, so that's going to be Stab, Sucker Punch. Also Stab, Knock Off, uh, which is good, Elemental Punches, Power Punch, um, so many things, so many things. Another Shadow Sneak, this thing has like three forms of priority, also has um, not just Drain Punch, but also Recover, so it has reliable ways of recovering, it has setup options. Um, if you let Kecleon, you know, if you uh, don't prepare enough for Kecleon, it could, it can definitely uh, put in some work. So um, I'm interested to see how I'm going to be able to fit Kecleon into this team. I think it's going to fit pretty well, and uh, yeah, I think it'll be fine. So that is uh, my team. My team after six uh, rounds, uh, it's not not my whole team, <laughs> but after six rounds, we had Scizor, which was 15 million. Uh, Garbo, which was 9, Dragonite, which was 15, Musharna, which was 8, Dante, which was 10, and Kekla, which was 5, which, if I do the math right, that's 39, 47, 57, 62 million that I spent um, on slightly over half my draft. So, yeah, uh, we're on pace, but like I said, I'm kind of on a streak of going a little bit lower tier, especially with Musharna and Kekleon, and uh, my next pick uh, also kind of goes like that. So, let me uh, delete these things from... Uh, from the thing, uh, so I can start showing you the uh, the rest of my team. Uh, it's lagging very slightly, um, but yeah. So the next thing that I wanted is I wanted to make sure that I had a fire type on my team, and uh, looking at the majority of my uh, draft plan, um, I knew that I wanted it to be a specially attacking fire type. Um, I also was really liking the idea of getting a Mon with, with a Flash Fire ability, um, because it just, it just deters people from using, like, Will-O-Wisp, uh, can stop Flare Blitz, Spam, things like that. And, um, I really, I was looking at, uh, Chandelure, I think in an ideal world, I would have gotten Chandelure, but just because of pricings and I didn't have any extra dollars to spend, if I wanted to get everything that I wanted. Um, I instead went with Typhlosion. Um, and I got Typhlosion just in time because I think that's another Mon that if I didn't take it that round in round 7, then Shadi would have picked that. So, yeah, I don't know what I would have done then. Maybe I would have sucked it up, gotten Chandelure, and then just had a worse draft. I don't know. But, uh, I don't know. I think Typhlosion works really well on this team. Uh, it does have Flash Fire like what I was looking for. Uh, it has decent move coverage. Uh, it's not the best. It doesn't really have anything to hit water types, uh, unfortunately, outside of Wild Charge, but that's not, eh, and Thunder Punch. But I mean, like, on the special side, which Typhlosion's usually a special attacker, you know, uh, I wish it got, like, Grass Nut or something. But, uh, nope, not the case. So, <coughs> there are some drawbacks to using Typhlosion, but I think I'll be able to work around them. Um, I also actually really like Typhlosion's uh, base stat spread, 109 special attacks, really good. Uh, 100 speed actually makes Typhlosion the fastest mod on my team, which mm, it might come back to bite me that I don't have anything faster, but I think I'll be able to work around that um, because I think my team synergizes really well. But again, that's a, we'll go over that at the end. Um, yeah, that's basically it. It gives me a fire Typhlosion, gives me a fire type, gives me a reliable special attacker. And uh, gives me decent, like 78, 78, 85. That's not bad. Um, it's definitely not frail. And uh, that's all I can really ask for. I didn't want any frail mons. Um, like I said, I want things to have offensive and defensive capabilities. And uh, I think I, I think I did a pretty decent job of that with Typhlosion. Also gives me a Will Wisp option, things like that. So that's Typhlosion. Typhlosion was only seven million, uh, which is really good. So for keeping track, that's uh, that's 69 million that I spent, which means that I was at 31 million left uh, with potentially four picks to go, which is a pretty good, pretty good deal. And um, I decided to go with uh, another lower tier pick that I, that I kind of wanted. Um, I'm still a little bit unsure about this, but I think it's going to do well. Um, I wanted to make sure that uh, uh, everyone talks about like bulky water types and how bulky water types are important. Um, 
as well as electric types. Uh, of course, people always talk about fast electric types, and I wasn't able to get a fast electric type, but I was able to get an electric type, uh, as well as a bulky water, um, and a very cheap one at that. I wanted to try and fit Vaporiano into my team because it wasn't drafted at this point, but again, I would have ended up with the worst draft if I got Vaporeon because then that means that I would have had to take away other things, um, and I think the other things are essential to my team. But with my 8th round pick, my 8th round pick, uh, I picked Lantern. Uh, Lantern is a mon that I'm not really familiar with, but I've started doing calcs with, and uh, it's better than I definitely gave it credit for. Uh, it has two immunities, or two potential immunities, in um, electric and water, uh, which is really good because it can stop uh, Volt Switch volt switch Spam, um, as well as Thunder Wave, and basically everything that gets Volt Switch can't really hurt Lantern with a Hidden Power Grass because Lantern is just that bulky, um, which is fine. Uh, water Absorb can be used to stop Scald Spam because Scald is a really popular move to use in uh, in League format and in general actually, not even in League format, just in general. Uh, base 125 HP is amazing, 76 spin F is good, 58 defense is workable with that with that HP stat. So um, the only drawback to Lantern is that it's not as offensive as I would like it to be. Base 76 special attack for its highest attack stat is mm, not, not that great. Uh, which could be better. Lantern has pretty good move coverage, but uh, again, without being able to do as much damage as other things, I don't know how much it's going to come into play. Uh, Lantern gives me another heal bell user, which when I put it onto the draft plan uh, initially uh, was one of the things that made me really want it, because I didn't have that many heal bell users, but that ended up changing as the draft plan evolved. But I still kept Lantern. Lantern was also only 4 million, um, which means that after 8 mons, I had only spent 73 million, so I had 27 million left um, after round 8, which is crazy. Um, yeah, another problem with Lantern is it doesn't really get reliable recovery. Um, once the opponent figures out which absorb I am, um, they're not going to be very likely to just give me HP back, so meh. But uh, yeah, Lantern is Lantern. I'm. We'll see if I'm able to use it effectively. I hope I am. Um, I don't know. I think it'll be alright. It also gives me a Bolt Switch user, so that's good. Uh, hopefully, hopefully Lantern pans out. Um, but I'm not too sure. Um, so we'll see. That's the one pick that I'm just like kind of eh about. But uh, we'll see. Hopefully, hopefully it turns out to be a good, a good thing that I picked it. Um, for my last, uh, my last couple months. I wanted to go back to drafting power, drafting some high, uh, some more expensive power that uh, people missed out on. Uh, the next mod I picked was uh, originally on my draft plan anyway, uh, kind of. Uh, I wanted a fighting type, fighting types are really good, and for me, when I uh, get fighting types, I really like fighting types that have drain punch, and uh, if they're bulkier, it's better. Um, at first I really wanted Mega Metacham, but of course because of uh, costs and things like that. Uh, I decided to go the slower, bulkier route, and I picked. That's not a mon. Conkelder. Conkelder is a mon. With my ninth, dra my ninth pick in round nine, I picked Conkelder, which is crazy. I don't know why everybody in the PPL never drafts this thing because it's so good. It's ridiculously good. Um, it. This is another mod. It has both offensive and defensive capabilities. Uh, 105, 95, it's not bad. 140, attack, you don't even need to invest in Drain Punch is going to hurt. Um, Assault Vest, of course, makes its Bidef really good. It has three really good abilities in Gut, Sheer Force, Iron Fist, as well as enough move coverage to hit basically everything that will switch in on this, as well as setup options with things like Bulk Up. So, Kinkouter is uh, amazing. It also gets Stab Priority, Mach Punch. Um, yeah, I don't know what there what there isn't to to love about Conkelder. Uh, I think it's going to be uh, an insanely good mon. Um, I think people really underestimate it in league format. Um, and I just think it's going to put in a lot of work. Guts is another thing that kind of deters Scald spam um, as well as Willowist spam because I could bring it. Uh, I really want to try and bring all three abilities throughout the season if I can, um, but we'll see. Whatever works for the matchup is what I'll bring. Um, so I can't make any promises, but 
I would love to try out some different uh, Kinkyoder stuff that isn't uh, as common. So, but we'll see how that works out. I think fighting types are really good, and bulky fighting types, uh, I think, are. I think Conkelder is going to put in a lot of work uh, this season. So I'm really ha excited to have it on my team. That was my my uh, extra big big spending thing. It was 14 million, which left me with 13 million left to spend for the last two rounds. I already knew one mod I wanted, which cost three million, but I was saving that for my last pick because I figured no one was going to pick it. Um, my draft plan actually included 10 million extra to draft whatever was left that I felt fit my team. Um, I kind of decided at first that I wanted a poison type. Well, not even necessarily that. I just saw that Nitto Queen wasn't drafted, and I really wanted Nitto Queen. And I thought Nitto Queen was ten million dollars, but right before I was about to pick it, I double checked the pricing list, and Nitto Queen was eleven million, which means I couldn't pick it. I have thirteen million left. I already have them on in my mind. That's three million, which means I have ten million to spend maximum. No more. Unless I can't get my last pack, and I, I didn't want to do that. So, uh, I went with a, a secondary option and another one that I thought of, which was Zoroark. And this was the first time that I got sniped even a little bit. Um, Zoroark wasn't a primary option, but it was 10 million. It was a, a mod that I could play with my opponent's heads with, with its illusion. Also gives me Sucker Punch, Pursuit Trapping, things like that. Uh, but it was sniped. Like five minutes before I had to go to work, Ethan picked it. So, I kind of was scrambling and I didn't really know what to pick. Um, but my boy Polymac decided to slide me an idea that while I was at work, I decided that I kind of fell in love with it. And it actually brought me back to why I wanted Nitto Queen in the first place. And that was a poison type that has a, like, a good special attack or special attacking move pool. Um, so with my 10th round pick, I got Trigauji. Um, after 10 rounds, no one had picked this thing, and, um, yeah, I got Trigauji. It's the second dragon on my team, but Trigauji and Dragonite fulfill two completely different roles, so I think they'll work on the team uh, together very well. Um, adaptability is fantastic, as well as Draco Meteor and Sludge Bomb, like, that's, it's, it's too good. Um, and also, you know... Very good defense, 123 speed def, yeah, 90 physical defense. It can it can work, um, and it gets enough move coverage uh, that helps it, in my opinion. And also, uh, Trick Algae gives me an option for toxic spikes, as well as it gives me a way to remove toxic spikes if uh, anyone uses them against me. So I'm really really happy I got Trick Algae. I think it's going to work so well on my team, and I think it synergizes very well with everything else. Um, and Dragaji was 10 million exactly, which means that I am spending my entire budget uh, in the draft. So, uh, yeah, that's Dragaji. Good special attacker with good special attacking move pool, um, but also has options for other things as well. And then with my last pick, there's I, I knew that I wanted to pick something out of the ordinary or something that I'd never seen in draft formats before. Um, last year, I got Cheeky and I drafted Jump Luff. And I wanted to do something similar um, as far as drafting something that no one would expect to be drafted and um, try and use it effectively. And I think I went a little bit smarter this year and I got the almighty, the all-powerful Sawsbuck. Yes, I'm so, I'm so happy I got Sawsbuck. Sawsbuck is one of my favorite Pokemon. Um, I don't use it a whole lot in competitive. I just love the way it looks and I I've, I've, have good memories using it in uh, playthroughs and stuff. But Sawsbuck uh, has three really good abilities, and it has really good uh, move pool. Uh, this is another mod that gets aerobotherapy and baton pass. Um, it has setup options. It has self recovery with Horn Leech, uh, as well as synthesis. So um, also gets you know support moves like Thunder Wave, Toxic, whatever, and um, enough enough move coverage that uh, it works. It works. Um, Sawsbuck was three million, and it's a really good mod. I wanted a Grass type. And this fulfills that role, and yeah, there's really not much I can say. I do have some plans for Saucebuck. I think Saucebuck is going to be something that I'm not going to try to force to bring. Um, I want to make sure that it fits for the matchup. And uh, but if I do bring it, just know that it is going to uh, it's going to put in work. <laughs> um, I really want to be smart with my team building this season. So 
I got the all powerful salt book. I'm really excited to use it. Uh, so just to run through my whole team one last time, it, was, it is Scizor, Gardevoir, Dragonite, Musharna, Donphia, Kecleon, Typhlosion, Lantern, Conkelder, Shigalji, and Sawsbuck. Um, I'm really excited to use this team. I think uh, I have a team good enough to win the league. I just need to play well enough with it. Um, I think it synergizes pretty well, and it also limits my opponent in team building because I have a lot of, of immunities. Um, Lantern is immune to water and uh, electric. Typhlosion being immune to fire. Sawsbuck uh, being immune to grass. Of course, this is all potential depending on the ability. Uh, Conkelder um, not being immune but getting boosted by any sort of status. Um, so it's just going to kind of limit my opponent's options for when they're deciding uh, what to what to put on their team and then what moves to go for in the battle. Um, so if I can capitalize on that, I will be set. Um, also, things like Scissor being weak to fire, I'm assuming I'm going to see a lot of hidden power fires against me this season. Um, the entirety, the entire rest of my team, uh, other than Sawsbuck, doesn't really care about HP fire or fire in general. So uh, that's going to work really well. Also, I mean, same thing goes for Dragonite. Uh, the entire rest of my team doesn't really care about ice, with the exception of, um, I guess, Donphan, Dragauji, Sawsbuck. But that's not really that big of a deal, especially since, like I said, Sawsbuck isn't going to be coming to that many matches, probably. So, yeah, that is uh, the team. I think it synergizes really well. It limits my opponent for team building, and it just allows me to, um, I don't know. I think I'm going to be able to do a lot of creative stuff this season. Um, a lot of these bonds I'm not super comfortable with in battle, or I'm not, I shouldn't say comfortable, I'm not super familiar with. I haven't used them a lot. Um, but I think that's going to benefit me, because I'm just going to look at these bonds as blank slates of, you know, things I can do with, instead of assuming, like, I feel like when you get super comfortable with a mon, you want to use the set that you're used to using it with, um, and that's kind of like your go-to, and for a lot of, for almost all of these mons, I don't have a go-to, um, which means that I will, I'll be more, I don't know, I think I'll be more able to uh, bring just whatever. Um, I'm going to look at all the move pools and all the different things I can do, calc a lot of things, and uh, I think you're going to see a lot of interesting stuff from me this season. So we're gonna go for the we're gonna go for the uh, for the championship here. Um, we finished seventh last season. I think we can do better, and uh, I think we will do better. So uh, first battle is going to be next Saturday, and it's going to be against Shroom Raver and the Parasect Remain. Uh, yeah, it's a pretty scary team. I'll have a uh, in-depth team analysis for for him uh, and my team against him eventually, either Friday or Saturday that I'll upload the battle. Um, yeah, so, I hope you guys are excited for that, I, this basically wraps up my team analysis recap, uh, leave your thoughts on my team, comment section below, let me know if you're supporting the Pittsburgh Pyroar for this season, and, uh, I think that basically covers everything, hope you guys are excited, I will see you guys in, uh, future PBL videos, so thanks for watching, uh, until the next time guys, stay sly.